All right, here we go. Today we're talking about the transition repeater. Ever since I got my transition Sentinel, I've been asking for one with a battery and a motor in it. And wish granted, now I've got one. The repeater is the first e-bike offering from the cool kids in Bellingham. I could not be more stoked to see an e-bike from transition. I really hope that opens the doors to more e-bikes. I don't know if the cool kids can do it. Everybody can do it. So I absolutely love my transition Sentinel. That's probably something you've heard over and over again. So I really have high hopes for this repeater. Let's jump into some quick hits and relevant information. This is a 150 mil rear, 160 millimeter front travel bike. It's pretty all mountainy, slightly aggressive, but not overly. It basically has very, very similar geometry to the Sentinel. And it uses the Shimano EP8, the motor we are probably the most familiar with, with a bigger than normal 630 watt hour battery. So let's jump into the ride right now. So the repeater uses Shimano's EP8 motor. It's the one I'm very familiar with. Probably the motor I've spent the most amount of time on. And it's funny, my daily driver is a Transition Sentinel, which Transition based this bike off of that bike. I freaking love a Sentinel. So I have high hopes for this thing. Let's take the rocky way. <laughs> it's funny how little it matters. <laughs> oh yeah, this is taking some effort. That was much easier on the rocky. So I think transitions just nailed the geometry on this thing. The seat tube angle feels steep, which still matters on an e-bike, maybe a little bit less, but still matters, it's more comfortable. Puts you in a better position to keep weight over both wheels. The head tube angle is slack, but not, well, it's slack. We'll just leave it at that. Good travel numbers. I think they did their homework. It doesn't feel super cumbersome. It is heavy, it is big, but it doesn't really feel that way on the climbs. Overall, I'd say it climbs a lot like a Sentinel does, but you know, times whatever because of the, the motor. But the suspension on this thing feels dialed too. Kind of got that ground huggy first third of travel and then a decent amount of ramp up. Keep things lively and engaging. On the downhill, this thing feels pretty maneuverable and agile. Through the corners and things, this bike felt quick. I think that's coming down to suspension design. Oh, hello, squirrel. Suspension design and geometry. Oh, it's feeling pretty quick and like skippy over the top of these bumps. So this suspension's pretty lively. Pretty nice for jumping, pumping, cornering. I still wouldn't say this bike is the easiest bike to get in the air. I'd chalk that up to chain state length and you know, it's 50 pounds. Let's see how this chunky stuff goes. I really like this section of trail. I like it more with good brakes, I'll tell you that. Just not used to these, I guess. You gotta give them a good, hard squeeze before they really hook up. There is power there, but you gotta get pretty far into it to get, get the power. So comparing it to the Rocky Mountain, this bike feels more lively on the ground, less lively in the air, if that makes any sense. It does, in my mind, at the, ooh, I love that little corner. <laughs> it does, in my mind, with riding them. It's not quite as plush. 
I think it gets a little more like lively firm suspension tune to help counterbalance 50 pound e-bike, but that may have been the move. Feels pretty quick and agile for an e-bike. Well, hands are taking a beating out here. I'm just full of complaints today. I think it's because it's so damn hot. Now we gotta go hit the drop here. Well, that was nice. All right, so we're gonna head back to the garage. We're gonna dive into the repeater, get a little nerdy, talk about who this bike's really good for, what it's good at, and if you should buy one. So on the climbs, a couple of things stood out to me. One is how well balanced the geometry is. This bike isn't floppy, it's not wandery, it's not difficult to manage, even on tight Southern Utah Mesa trails. The seat tube was nice and steep, something I appreciate. It seems like a lot of e-bikes try to err on the maybe slacker side, which I don't always like, especially with a lot of extra power from an e-bike motor, that front end wants to be light and lift up and wheelie and wander. Uh, with a steeper seat tube angle, you can keep that front wheel weighted just a little bit better. You don't want to go too steep though, because then the back doesn't have weight on it and then you have no traction and what good is all that power if there's no traction? I think the repeater gets it perfect. The front rear wheel balance is perfect. I couldn't ask for anything different. You pair that really good climbing geometry to really good suspension that's soft in the first initial bit of the stroke, which gives you a lot of traction, and then it ramps up so you're not wasting all of your energy bouncing into your mid-stroke. That works really well to make a bike that climbs really well. I really like that soft initial stroke because traction is king for any bike. If you can't keep that rear wheel on the ground driving the bike forward, it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. I do really like the Shimano EP8 motor. It has a couple drawbacks. It's a little bit noisy and it, it compared to some of the other stuff I've ridden recently, it's a little bit torquey, but honestly, you've got a lazy Sunday ride coming up and you just want to fart around in soft pedal the whole time. This is the motor for doing that because it gives you kind of all of the power, even if you're not putting in all of the power yourself. So I do like that it comes on fast, it comes on strong and it, it's just, it works, it feels great. I really like that motor. So overall on the climbs, I think the repeater does a really good job. It goes uphill pretty well. For being a semi-aggressive bike by today's standards, uh, it's not floppy, it's not wandery, it's not difficult to control, even though it's big and heavy. Let's jump into the downhill and just like the Sentinel, the suspension geo combo is perfect. The suspension is incredible. Um, it's again, you know, soft initial stroke for tons of traction, smoothness, control on the bike with a lot of ramp up. And that ramp up is huge on an e-bike. Without it, the bike just gushes through all its travel and kind of sucks and it's boring and no fun to ride. With a lot of ramp up and a, a lot of progression, the bike feels more lively and you really need that when your bike weighs 50 plus pounds. So the repeater has plenty of support for corners and jumping and bunny hopping and pumping and doing all the stuff that makes biking fun. I will say it maybe wasn't as plush as I was expecting it to be. I've ridden a lot of e-bikes that just feel like a magic carpet ride. This one didn't feel like that. There was some feedback from the trail, but in a good way. I talked about this with the Rocky Mountain Altitude. That little bit of feedback from the trail comes from a bit firmer suspension tune or something that's not quite so supple and plush, but that's what makes the bike lively and that's what makes it fun to ride. And you really, really need that with a big heavy bike because it counteracts that big heavy bike just a little bit. So I really felt like the repeater was actually pretty nimble and agile, especially on the ground. It wasn't the easiest bike to get in the air. It does have long chain stays, it's heavy. It wasn't the easiest bike I've ever tried to bunny hop, but on the ground, it felt incredibly nimble. It felt easy to change lines, pick a line, rather than just get to the top, point it downhill and hang on for dear life. This bike let you control it, let you ride it and be in charge. And that's really fun. I am working on a big e-bike showdown between the repeater, the heckler and the altitude. I'm not quite ready to make all those comparisons just yet, but I will say quickly that the most lively, fun, playful bike is the heckler. The most well-rounded, all mountain, go everywhere, do everything, most versatile option, I think is the repeater. And lastly, the most capable, and I think the best motor e-bike is the Altitude. So stay tuned, don't miss the big showdown. It should be actually pretty cool. I'm excited about it. 
All right, so who is the repeater for? I think it's for someone looking for a do-everything e-bike. It's a very, very well-rounded option with incredible geometry. Honestly, I don't think they could have done it better uh, and a really good suspension platform. So put those two things together, you've got a great bike. It's got a good tried and true motor drive system in it. So if you're looking for a good kind of safe option, the repeater is your bike. And then if you're like me and you have ridden a Sentinel and you love the Sentinel, which you should because it's an amazing bike, uh, you're gonna like the repeater because it's basically the same, but it's got a motor in it. I do wanna address something. In this video, the motor rattle sounds way, way worse than it actually does in person. Um, I don't know what it is with like the microphone settings or the audio levels or something, but it really accentuated that rattle. Um, so it does sound very bad in this video, but it doesn't sound that bad in real life. It sounds pretty similar to every other EP8 I've ever ridden. Granted, the trail I was on is kind of high speed. It's pretty chattery, and that's going to make that rattle as bad as it gets. So don't let this video scare you with that rattle noise. It's, it's not as bad as it seems. That said, I think every e-bike that comes with an EP8 should also come with a set of headphones. <laughs> So one line bike review, just to wrap this thing up, the repeater is the perfect kind of aggressive all mountain bike that doesn't penalize you for farting around on a Sunday morning. So thanks for sticking around. See you next time.